12 minutes past two. Really want to have a, a strong Warriors focus this hour as we build towards tonight's game against the Broncos. Five past six kickoff. And uh, what better place to start than with the club CEO? Cameron George is with us. Good afternoon, Cameron. Good afternoon, Jason. Before we look at the uh, the game, a couple of nuts and bolts, uh, administratively wise. Uh, what's the latest on getting the team home and through MIQ? Any update there? No update, really. Um, no opportunity at this point in time. Um, you know, we understand the borders are shut. Uh, there's no MIQ spots that are available or have become available in order for us to get anyone home, really. So uh, as it stands now, um, um, following on from some discussions with the NRL the other day, we're just here indefinitely and, um, yeah, not sure not sure where it's all going to land. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we see some some good traction happen in Zealand, which then could could and may present the opportunity for the borders to be reopened. But, yeah, it's out of our control. Yeah, indeed. Is there any other option, Cameron? Has the government considered other alternatives, like, I don't know, self-isolating private facilities, things like that, for sports teams? Yeah, we, we've asked, you know, uh, so many different angles and options and so on. Uh, we, you know, we, we definitely respect the situation everyone's in. It's not just about us. Um, and we're also, you know, we've got to be conscious there's families out there suffering just as much as what um, ours are. And, and um, you know, th- there's no there's no real option at the moment other than just the public way. And we respect that. We understand that. It's just unfortunate for us and many other people trying to get back to New Zealand. Yeah, but most of them haven't been away for two years, Cameron. And given the sacrifices that the club has made and the players, management, all of those who have spent the best part of two seasons across the Tasman. Is there any degree of frustration at all that that you're not given a little bit of leeway because of what you've done? Um, look, not, not, not on a personal note. If, if I could, if I could say something, it's it's you know we we had COVID last year and we saw the impact that had on travelling sports teams. And, you know, we should always try and learn something out of you know the circumstances we're in and. I just hope. I just. I was hoping last year that you know we all learnt as a nation to maybe provide a facility for travelling international sports teams that could train and quarantine at the same time, which then you know when they come out and, and play their sport, it gives the local public um, some really you know exciting entertainment. And but that that hasn't been developed. Uh, the other quarantine option for anyone is um, just through government hotel quarantine. Um, so I was hopeful that would have been developed on the back of the last year, but made that that's probably the frustrating part for me that it's not only us they prevent they prevent many other travelling sporting teams uh, to come to New Zealand and and play, which which I think we need to get right moving forward. Yeah, if a facility like that was set up, and I know it would be different because the Warriors would be coming home rather than a touring team coming here, but if such a facility was set up, would would the Warriors you know entertain the thought of being a bit of a guinea pig there as a, as an elite sporting team going into a facility like that? Yeah, well, we did that last year for the Australian government um, where we went to Tamworth, if you recall, and we were locked down. We were able to train in a, in a, in a hub, so to speak, and we did it here when we got to Queensland. So um, it does work. It is happening in other other jurisdictions. Um, and, and I think it's something that we need to look at from a sporting perspective because it will, it will happen again in the future where we want to get a team into the country to play whatever sport it is in order... Who, uh, it'll inject a lot of money in the economy, no doubt. Um, whether it's a Wallabies, whether it's us, whether it's another, another, another team, cricket, whatever it be. Um, so it is something we should look at because I think this border game, international wise, is going to be a challenge for some time ahead. We had uh, New Zealand Rugby CEO Mark Robinson on the show yesterday uh, just on the subject of their uh, reluctance to travel to Perth because of the uncertainty around their schedule. Uh, I just wanted, I guess, to get your thoughts on that as a fellow administrator. Um, you know, he talks about player welfare, given what you know what your players have been through in the last couple of years. Yeah, I get exactly where he's coming from. I wouldn't wish anyone to be in the shoes of making decisions on behalf of families and players to travel offshore, um, you know, in this in this climate, it's just so difficult. Um, you know, we can't make decisions because we've got no control over what's going on. That's the difficult part. So, I share and sympathise with those guys. It's not ideal, but I think all you do is make a call. What I've learned is you make the call with what's in place today and don't speculate what could happen because that's when you get yourself in trouble. And um, 
you know, I think as much as everyone would have liked to have seen the All Blacks go, um, they've made the right call in the best interests of themselves, their families, and um, that's really important during these times. Let's talk about some on-field stuff, shall we? I mean, the, the team's going pretty well at the moment. Three in a row, uh, playing well, uh, a chance still to make the eight. Have you been encouraged with what you've seen in the last couple of weeks from the team? We have. Um, look, you know, no doubt every day we've had to work with a winning attitude and and it's such a hard competition and we've, we've been caught short a few times and that's through various reasons. But, you know, the, the one thing I can give this group is every day... Um, you know they do. They do want to do the absolute best they can for their their fans and their families and everyone included in the club. And um, what we've seen over the last three weeks is on the back of you know some big decisions the club had to make around Rog and Lee on, and we've lost Torhu as well due to injury. Um, we've got a bunch of young guys that are going after what's left for the year, and that was a decision the team made a few weeks ago. And when Rog left, and although we were written off externally uh, by a lot of people um, internally. We just knew we had to get back in winning footy games and once you start doing that, you build confidence and that's what we're seeing at the moment. So hopefully that leads into a good performance today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure I'll butcher this saying, but I think it's something like uh, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals character. Uh, have you uh, been privy to some fairly revealing um, shows of character from some of the members of your coaching staff and your players over the last couple of years? Yeah, hundred um, you know, percent. Yeah, I'm not even Adam for Noah Blake, to be honest. You know, Adam was a part of our, our club this year, and um, him and his family have endured all the challenges everyone else has here. And uh, he's got four young kids, and he's been thrown into the captaincy role, and he's led from the front. He's a man that um, leads, and, and and when he speaks, the boys follow. And uh, I've really seen a a really good leader in Adam um, over the last couple of months. But in general, we've seen players confront the adversity, deal with bad news and still get out there and try their best. Um, there's been some games where we fell a bit short in that respect, but we certainly got back to work. And Brownie's done a great job in leading the group through some difficult times as well. So all in all, it's not about feeling sorry for us. We're here to win a competition, and, and, and we've got to go out there today and win and make it four in a row. That's, there's no option for us but to do that, and hopefully we can, we can travel to Brisbane and, and put our best foot forward, which will be a tough game. Now, there have been some reports, I'm sure you've seen them, I know you have, that uh, that the Broncos want Reese Walsh back, which is hardly surprising. He's a great kid. Uh, can you give Warriors fans any reassurance that he's uh, he's going to stick around? Reese is extremely happy. Um, I was only talking to him in yesterday. Uh, his father even reached out, um, had a good chat. And look, the club, as I said previously, you know, the club um, provided that faith to Leith, uh, Leith, to uh, Reese when... Um, when the opportunity arose, and he's really enjoying his footy. He's a good kid. The club and him get on extremely well, and um, he's, he's, he's certainly fitted in well with a young group of players that are starting to progress really well. And like any player, when they become available, every club will have a crack. But, um, you know, as I said before, I just think it was ironic it came out this week. But anyway, we'll, we'll go there today. We'll just try and win a game of footy. That's our focus. Fantastic. Great to chat, Cameron. Thanks, as always, for being so accessible to us. Thanks, mate. Have a good day. You have a good day too. Cameron George, Chief Executive of the Warriors. Some really interesting thoughts there. Kia ora, Ben Hurley here from the ACC's Mad Monday podcast. If you are a rugby league fan, then make sure you check out the ACC's Mad Monday podcast, available now on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.